Good afternoon and welcome to another six minutes. Today we have Dr. Nur Jazlan Mohammad, MP for Pulai and Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. Dr. Nur Jazlan, um, in the last few weeks uh, you've had many hearings for the PAC, you raised many matters and I think in the coming weeks you're going to bring out a report on KLIA 2. Interestingly, um, some people were quite upset when you said there was elements of uh, wrongdoing, particularly like Felcra, yes. and how, how the board of directors uh, rewarded themselves with bonuses. Do you think this is just the tip of the iceberg, or do you think most of them think that this is business as usual? Well, I think uh, the issues uh, were raised by the Auditor, Auditor General in his report. We are just picking up on his report. But I think progress has been made, that uh, many issues have been, that, have been, that have been raised by the Auditor General's report. Uh, have been addressed by the PAC. You know, there was an issue about uh, board members, uh, especially uh, uh, chairman, who uh, who actually proposed to reward themselves with bonuses, which are not in line with MOF uh, rules. So these issues need to be taken action on to show that the government is doing something to correct the uh, excesses of government. Uh, a few years ago, you challenged, uh, or you ran for the deputy president, Amno and part way you withdrew. Uh, you think your party uh, welcomes youth change or new ideas or are they stuck where they just want to feed on the crumbs of, of uh, whatever wealth this country has? Well, that's not a fair statement to say because young people don't, in AMNO don't think that way. When I was first elected to the AMNO Youth uh, Council 20 years ago, I uh, had high dreams and high expectations. And then um, after about, about nine years of serving on the council, I became, if you use the metaphor, I'm no youth because I became old with the committee. And uh, when I entered the uh, deputy president's race, it was for the specific uh, objective to basically raise the issue about uh, rejuvenation of talent in the party. Six years down the road, I don't think that has happened. Uh, and then therefore, uh, I don't think the party is serious about uh, putting young people forward. The party has its annual general meeting this week uh, and everyone looks forward to it. There will be lots of speeches every year. Do you think it's all fluff? What's the substance of any meeting? And, and having said that your party is not serious about youth, how do you think it will go from here? The problem is about the party getting old. Uh, the message that has been going out to the people is also old. The thinking is old. And therefore it doesn't attract uh, the public uh, as such to the AMNO General Assembly. And it's just dominated by the same speakers uh, spewing out the same rhetoric about uh, Islam, about uh, Malay supremacy, that, uh, that is uh, trapped in the past. They should, if they want to talk about uh, Islam issues, Malay issues, you know, even Sedition Act, you should, you should look at how it can uh, benefit the Malays in the future and then also attract support to UMNO instead of just spewing out the old way of thinking um, as AMNO has done for many years. Do you think the community, the Malays, have outgrown the party? Of course, of course. Um, I wrote an article about social mobility among the Malays. You know, you have the elite, you know, Datuk Sri Najib, Datuk Sri Sham, they came from the elite because their fathers were from the elite. Uh, and then you have uh, people who are from the lower level, low income, who move up because of the economic progress of the country and move up to higher income and they become the new elite. Now, this new elite do not necessarily conform to the old elite. So you can see a classification of the Malays uh, happening over the last uh, 60 years uh, since independence because of economic wealth. So Amno's success has become its downfall? Why not? That's, that's natural with uh, any other country in the world. Uh, as the country becomes more developed, people you know, develop their own uh, thinking. Uh, they look at the future, they don't look at the past. AMNO is looking at the past, people are looking to the future, so AMNO needs to catch up. You think it's capable with the current leadership or the ones after you coming up within the party? Well, I think it's a bit difficult because uh, the Prime Minister, the President of the party, is trying to f form a situation where he is the centre of the universe. Today, you don't hear him talking about One Malaysia too much anymore because it's already been um, branded as a failure by, by, by some people. What he needs to do is basically to force the Malays to change, but at the same time, the Amno Malays may force him to, to be changed. So that's the risk that he carries at the moment. Uh, you know, your, your, your late father actually was very loyal to, doc, uh, to Dr. Mahathir yes, yes. Uh, He He made a man who was so unpopular very popular. You think there are any lessons drawn from your father's time? 
Well, my father, my father took Amno up from a situation when it, where, where it was in oblivion. It was banned as a party, and then basically to build up uh, Amno again from scratch was not, uh, was not not an easy task. And that was only 25 years ago. So, if uh, Amno has had already been uh, the rejuvenated from from ash, and 25 years later it is back in trouble. So there's something wrong about the whole uh, Amno uh, culture and the whole Amno uh, structure and strategy because you can't collapse in 25 years. So maybe what my father did before was to, do, to make Amno better, but at the same time, the people who dominated the structure that, uh, that was rebuilt also carried the same kind of thinking, the same way of uh, doing things that actually uh, made whatever he did uh, uh, a waste. So why are you still in Amno? Um, well, Better, better talk from inside than not talk from outside. We, were, we already have too many uh, young people uh, in opposition, you know, talking against the government and trying to change the government from outside, trying, trying to change Amno from outside. But I think that's not going to work in the next um, few general elections. So better I talk from inside, but with a different kind of thinking, with a future, futuristic kind of thinking, not the past kind of thinking. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nojazlan. Uh, Dr. Nojazlan, MP for Pulai. Public Audit Committee Chairman and, and a, a man to look out for in the future. Thank you very much.